Wow, it's good to be in the house tonight, amen? So glad you came, enjoyed the good singing, the sweet presence of the Lord that we feel. If you have your Bible tonight, go to the book of 2 Kings. Go to 2 Kings chapter number 5. I'll begin tonight in verse 1. 2 Kings chapter 5, beginning in verse 1. I'll get there, go from 1 to verse 4, and uh, we'll preach a little bit tonight uh, out of this familiar story. 2 Kings chapter 5, beginning in verse 1. Do me a favor, when you get to 2 Kings chapter 5, and you get to verse 1, shout amen. amen. If you said amen, or even if you didn't, stand, and I'll read these four verses in your hearing tonight. Now Naaman, captain of the host of the king of Syria, was a great man with his master, and honorable because by him the Lord had given deliverance unto Syria. He was also a mighty man in valor, but he was a leper. And the Syrians had gone out by companies and had brought away captive out of the land of Israel a little maid. She waited on Naaman's wife. She said unto her mistress, Would God, my Lord, were with the prophet that is in Samaria, for he would recover him of his leprosy. One went in and told his Lord, saying, Thus and thus said the maid that is of the land of Israel. You may be seated. Father, I thank you tonight for the reading of the Word of God. Thank you for what you did Sunday, what you did Sunday night, Monday and Tuesday. Thank you, Lord, for the good singing, the congregational singing. God, the special music by this young man and this young lady, how they ministered to us and blessed us. We honor you. We bless you. Now, God, for the next few moments, would you loose my mouth? Would you loose my tongue? Let the gospel ring with clarity and with boldness and with power. And we'll give you praise in Jesus' name. Everybody said, Amen. I want to take this little maid um, tonight. Uh, and before I give you my title, uh, I, I, I come across this little statement a few months ago and I, it, it absolutely just began to deal with me. And I, I, I have built two or three sermons off of this phrase. And here is the phrase, unknown here, well known there. How many tonight want to be known up there? Amen. Now, with that in mind, I, I said, God, what do you want me to preach? He said, Derek, I want you to take the little maid and I want you to preach a message on the unknown connector. The unknown connector. Now, I can see the wheels are, are kind of going rolling in your mind. The unknown connector. I am convinced maybe this isn't a problem over here in Virginia. But where I'm from, it seems to be a problem. That we want to be known here. We want people to like us. We want more likes on Facebook. Amen. We want more. And someone said, do you know anything about it? I know enough about it. I'm not on it. And I'm not mad if you are. And I'm not picking on you if you are. But I want you to understand, Brother Danny, what gets me is we are literally trying to be known here. But wouldn't it be sad, Grace, if we were known here but we wasn't known there. Wouldn't it be sad? I believe it was Jesus. 
And, and the gentleman came and said, have I not cast out devils in your name? And hadn't I done great things? And Jesus looked at him and said, depart from me, you worker of iniquity. I never knew you. I thought about that and I'll just say this and I'll go. Do you realize tonight there's going to be more in hell than that go to heaven? You say, how do you know that? Well, Brother Joe, the Bible said for broad is the way that leads to death and destruction. And many there be that enter thereat. Narrow is the way that leads to life. And few there be that find it. So I thought, wow, that's interesting to me. Then God told me this. And, and man, when God starts talking to me, Brother Randy, and he asks me questions, it, it's, I know immediately, Jeremy, when he asks me questions, I don't know the answer. Yeah, let's go back over the rules. This, this is yes. Hey, here's what he did to me. He said, Derek, have you ever thought about the rich man and Lazarus? I said, well, yeah, I mean, I thought about them. I, I preached about the rich man and Lazarus. He said, that ain't what I asked. And I said, well, no, I, I, don't, I hadn't considered it. I've never put a whole lot of weight in it. He said, well, let me, let me explain something to you, Derek. The rich man in heaven, I just call him, whatchamacallit. But Lazarus, I know him by name. How many would agree that's a big deal? And so you say, preacher, what are you trying to tell me? This little maid in 2 Kings chapter 5. Oh, she's going to cause celebrations. She's going to cause parties up in glory. Now, here's where preaching got good to me, Brother Danny. This little maid, about the age of 12 to 14 years of age, she'll take her hand of influence and she'll reach to God and she'll take her other hand and reach to a Gentile leprous captain named Naaman and she will connect y'all ain't hearing me she will connect a heathen a carnal man she will connect him to the eternal Woo. hold up you say preacher is that a big deal? Connecting heathens and connecting the carnal to the eternal? I believe it's the biggest deal. And I'll tell you what I want to be on a Wednesday night in Louisa, Virginia. I want to be the unknown connector. I want to connect a world that is on its way to hell to an eternal God that can save them, that can redeem them, that can change them. Well, I feel the Holy Ghost tonight. You say, well, preacher, you always feel the Holy Well, I can't help it. He lives in me. I want to be the unknown connector. And this little girl, this little maid will be the connection. She will connect him to eternal God. Now, I, I'm not trying to be nosy. God forbid me to stick my nose in your business. But I'm going to. Brother Paul, I was down in South Arkansas. Now, I call South Arkansas South America. <laughs> Anyhow, I'm down in South America, I'm down, and that's just a joke, but I'm down in South Arkansas, and, and I'm down there preaching. And then this Sister Tammy, this Sister Cindy, this little lady come to me. I, I'm, I'm 49. She's, she's probably 58, 60 years of age. And she comes to me and she said, Preacher, don't you stick your nose in my business. Everybody look up here. I didn't know 
I had stuck my nose in her business. But I'm going to tell you, Brother Sam, what it was. The Holy Ghost convicted her. I didn't put my nose in her business. I just preached the truth. Amen. And, and so when I think about sticking my nose, here's what I'm going to say. If you're a born again believer here at Grace Free with Baptist Church and you say your name has been written in the Lamb's Book of Life and you're on your way to heaven, then here is a convicting statement. Tell me the names of the people that are heavy on your heart right now that you're trying to connect to God. Wow. How many would agree? Now, now, look up here. We're all churchy and we're all going to act like we got a list. I won't look at your list after church. Show me your list. Tell me the people of the name. Tell me the names, Jeremy, that's heavy on your heart. Why'd you call Jeremy? Well, let me call Danny. Let me call Randy. Let me call... Jo- Amen. Let me call Darren. Let me call Wally. Am I, can I call anybody else? Ju- James. Who else? Derek. Wes. God, I'm more preacher. Hold up. I ain't scared to ask you your name. But tell me the names of the people that are heavy on your heart. How many would agree tonight? That is a convicting statement. I would to God that the American church in 2023 would have a burning desire, would have a holy hunger to connect the carnal, to connect the heathen, to connect the lost to an eternal God that could redeem them, an eternal God that could change their life. Would anybody agree? We need to be the unknown connector. Now, If I don't go, we'll be here too long. You say, preacher, how many points do you got? Look up here so I can help you. Now, you do realize it is 427 in California. I think. It really don't matter. Somebody say amen. Hey, but here's what I, I got three characters I'll give you tonight. And, and I'll break it down the best I know how. I'm in verse 1. I'm in 2 Kings chapter 5. I'm in verse 1. I see the known sinner. The known sinner. Look at this, Brother Danny. Now the captain, excuse me, now naming captain of the host of the king of Syria was a great man with his master honorable because by him the Lord given deliverance unto Syria. So I want you to notice, Brother Randy, the Bible said he was a great man. The Bible said, it goes a little deeper, not only great, then it says he was honorable, and, and it even goes more, says he's a mighty man in valor. Now, I was reading in the book of Romans, the apostle Paul told us in Romans, he said, for whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning. I am convinced, church, that this beautiful picture in 2 Kings chapter 5 is a beautiful picture of redemption. Because this man was a leper, and, and Brother Paul, God made him whole. And God made him complete. Isn't that redemption? Making somebody whole. Making somebody complete. Changing their life. Now, I, I thought about it. I said, okay, God, I see the characteristics of a sinner. Oh, I'll tell you, he's a great man. You study that terminology. Brother Joe, it means being held in high regard. Then you find the little word honorable. It means royal favor. The Bible says because by him the Lord had given deliverance unto Syria. I need everybody look up here. Naaman has given deliverance to Syria. And Brother Randy, he's a Sinner. Well, how 
did he give deliverance to Syria? Well, I'm going to answer that. He was a pawn on the chessboard of God's chessboard. And God was moving him. And I hear people, Brother Danny, say, well, preacher, how does God use a heathen by the name of Naaman? Well, look up here. God can use whoever he wants to use. Because he's God. I'm going to shock you more, Sam. He doesn't even have to have that Derek and Sam's permission. He does what he will. He, he is sovereign God. He is eternal God. So I see the characteristics. I'm not done. He's a mighty man. Means he's a great warrior. Means he's a brave warrior. Here's what I found. I said, okay, God, I see the characteristics of a sinner. But in all honesty, I see the characteristics of a saint. Oh, Wes, what do you mean, Derek? How, well, it, he said he was a great man. Said he was an honorable man. Said he was a man of a, a mighty in valor. Now, here's what got me, Wally. Here's what got me, church. If he walked into grace tonight, and it could be any church in America, so I'm not picking on grace, we would probably put him as the head of the deacon board. Let's go back over the rules. We would, because he looks good. How I many you know what I've learned in life? <laughs> looks can be deceiving. Oh God, I, I could jump in the middle of that. Hey, the, I, I've seen people that look sweet, that talk sweet, and, and dress sweet, and, and played the role. And, and I hate to tell y'all this, but some of the meanest people on the planet go to church. Amen. This is going over real good. But I'm not done. I said, okay, I, I, I see the characteristics. Here's what I really want to preach. And, and I got to move a little bit, Brother Danny. I, I not only see the characteristics of a sinner, I, I see the condition of the sinner. What do you mean condition? What's this, Brother Joe? But he was a leper. He's got one itsy bitsy problem. He's a sinner. Sin is pictured in the Bible by leprosy. Let me give you a little context and get a little painting on, on the canvas. The Bible says in the book of Ephesians chapter 4, verse 18, having the understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God, that through the ignorance that is in them, listen to me, would you agree sin darkens the mind? Sin separates you from God. And so I said, God, that's interesting. He said, Derek, it is the picture of sin. Leprosy is the condition of the sinner. Now, I, I wrote down, you can do your own study. Brother Danny, I, there, there's a whole list. If you just study a little bit about leprosy, you'll find what I'm about to give you. Leprosy at the start is insignificant at the start. It starts as a little pimple, a little bump, a little rash. Now, uh, boy, I make statements like this. Please, I'm not looking for answers. <laughs> but I, 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 women, I'll tell you what you would do if you had a little pimple, a little spot, a little rash. You would take your blush Don't y'all, Carrie, don't y'all act confused. <laughs> Crystal, don't, amen. I'm just going to go ahead and tell you. I think that's wise. <laughs> but, I mean, I, I, don't, you ain't got to do it for my sake, but I'm telling you, it starts out small. So we try to cut. Has anybody noticed we're living in a world that is trying to cover it up? Be sure your sin will find you out. There are none of us can hide it from God. 
You might hide it from Derek, but you cannot hide it from God. If you agree, would you shout amen? Now, I studied a little more and I want to go. I said, okay, God, leprosy was inherited. It is a poison that goes through the blood. It comes from the Father. I know that leprosy is a curse. I could go on and on. Leprosy works without perception or pain. Once you feel it, it's too late. How many would agree that is a beautiful picture of how sin works in our lives? Without, it works without perception or pain. I'm not done. Leprosy spreads rapidly and deadly. It starts so small. Then it eats away at the body. And Brother Joe, then a finger falls off. Then an ear falls off. Then a toe. I mean, it, it starts on the inside and, and it destroys the flesh and, and it destroys the body. Would anybody agree? That's exactly the painting of sin. Amen. Now, Romans chapter 7, verse 18. We talked a little bit about this tonight at supper. For I know that it is, that is in me, that is in my flesh, dwelleth no good thing, for the will is present with me. But how to perform that which is good, I find not. Brother Danny, I'm going to tell you, church, the truth. Once I met God, I realized there was nothing good in me. Brother Joe, once I had an encounter with God, I realized there's nothing good in Derek. How many would agree that painting is true for you as well? Once you have an encounter with a holy and a righteous God, it becomes crystal clear that you are dirty and in need of redemption. Now, I'll dig deeper. Leprosy is highly infectious. It spreads. And Brother Jeremy, in the Bible days, they, they would wear a mask. And if you got within 50 feet, you would have to cry, Unclean! Unclean! And I got to thinking about that. I'm so glad that God put a built-in GPS in us. What? When we start going in the wrong direction, Holy Ghost says, back up! Anybody glad He lives inside of us? Hey, I am, sir. I am, ma'am, but hold up. I said, I see the condition. I see the characteristics of a sinner. Then God gave me this. It was so good. Brother, Brother Danny, I thought, wow. Have you ever noticed, and I, I, I'm about to go to point two, but watch this. Have you ever noticed God in the Old Testament? They never sent a leper to the doctor. They always sent them to the priest. Some of y'all are going to the doctor. And you need to go to go, you need to go to God. And bow your head and bow your hearts at an altar and experience the God of grace and the God of redemption and come and all own up and say, God, I need you more than anything else. Now, I'm going to paint the picture just a little more and I'm going to point to Ephesians chapter 2 verse 1. And you hath he quickened who were dead in trespasses and in sin. That little word dead, Randy, means a corpse. Hey, hey I, I got a buddy that, that works in a funeral home. Man, I, I, make, I love funeral home guys. But, but y'all, I, 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 I'm just telling you, it's hard to feel sorry for them guys. Not that they don't have to deal with death, but they get a whole lot of money. Amen. Let's go back over the rule. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Hold up. But I have never, all my days, Brother Joe, all my days, I have never heard this. You know over in room one, old Jim 
He's half dead. Wally, and then over in room three, you know, Sue over there, she's three quarters dead. No, no. Dead, Mr. Tommy, is dead. I knew this was, this is my deep stuff. I, amen. Now, Derek, are you painting anything that we can get? I'm trying. Listen, you who, who were dead in trespasses and in sin, I got an answer tonight. If your world is messed up, if your world's in shambles, I'm glad I can tell you, you can come to Him and He can quicken you. He can raise you from the dead. He can change your life forever. Now, I said, boy, God, that's good. God kept telling me, I kept hearing him today. He said, Derek, tell grace, tell grace. They need to be the unknown connector. And, and so I go to my second point. I see the known sinner. Here's where I really want to preach. Number two, the unknown saint. The unknown saint. This little maid. Sister Crystal, what did she do? Listen, I've done said it once. Is anybody heavy on your heart? Is anybody heavy on your heart that you are praying that you could connect them to eternal God so they could be changed and their lives different? The unknown saint. I see three things tonight, and it will not take me long if you'll listen quick and you'll amen. I see the prisoner connection. Verse 2, 2 Kings chapter 5, verse 2. The Syrians had gone out by companies and had brought away captive out of the land of Israel a little maid. Hey, we don't even know her name. Jeremy, we don't even know her name. She's from the age of 12 to 14. And I said, God, what are you talking about? The prisoner connection. He said, Derek, she's been snatched. This is interesting, Brother Joe. Randy, she's been snatched from her daddy and her mama. She's been snatched from her God. She's been snatched from her worship. Hey, she's been snatched from the diet, the very food she eats. You want to get on my nerves? Take me from daddy and mama. And then, not only take me from daddy and mama, take me away from the, my church, my connection to God. Now ultimately, we know she could still connect even though she's prisoner. And she, but listen, do not miss this. And now they've snatched her from her daddy and her mama. They've snatched her away from her worship and even the very food that she eats. Would anybody agree? That don't sound appetizing to me. Now, give me a minute of your time. And I said, wow, God, prisoner connection. Naaman is a great man. She is a little maid. Naaman is a respected Gentile captain. She is a hated Jew. Naaman is well known. She is a lowly household slave. Hey, but here's what I love, Brother Randy. What her whole heart is, she wants to connect Naaman to the eternal. Wow. Now, Derek, I don't know why that excites you the way it does. Brother Danny, I'll tell you why. Brother Tommy, I'll tell you why. I spend my life trying to connect people to the eternal. Can I tell you, you believe what you want to, Brother Joe. Y'all can believe what you want to. I am not trying to wow you with a great message. I'm trying to connect you to eternal God. Has anybody ever noticed, have you, maybe this isn't a problem over here. Has anybody ever noticed we always want credit? Oh God, we... Didn't I do good? Yeah, if it wasn't for pride, you couldn't. Amen. How about go? We think we're special. 
Look up here. You, this is good, Wally. I mean, you might want to write this down. You know what dirt is that gets stuck on itself? It's mud. <laughs> Leave me alone, Brother Sam. It's true. It's what mud is. You get stuck on yourself. You get to thinking you're better than everybody else. You're not nearly as good as you thought. Hey, listen, the prisoner connection, write this down. I said, wow, God said, I'm not done. Then there's the parental connection. Prisoner connection, parental connection. Think about this, Jeremy, with me. Her daddy and mama must have thought a million times, how did a favored daughter of Abraham become a slave of a Gentile captain named Naaman? How did my baby girl, Brother Junior, how did my baby girl become a slave to a heathen captain named Naaman. I thought about that, Brother Wes. You know what I've learned about my God? He takes me places and He makes me pass by people. But He's never made me cross paths with people that He wasn't trying to get me to connect them to Him. He wastes nothing. Amen. Now, Derek, do you, has God ever took you places? It's, oh, I remember I went to Wellington, Kansas, and I got up and preached, and, and I, I could tell you the sermon. I, I could tell you the verses. I could tell you the points. And, and there was a young man in the back of the audience named Josh Bush. Josh was a myth head. Josh's world was in shambles. I got up. I'm from Arkansas. He's from Wichita. They invited him to that meeting in Wellington, Kansas. I stood behind a pulpit similar to this in Wellington, Kansas. Brother Joe, I'm not bragging, but we had 50 people saved that week. Now everybody look up here so I can help you. This, Sam, I'm going to tell you the truth. It wasn't that I preached great sermons. They had prayed for a year before I got there. And 50 people got saved. You know why? Because they prepared. Brother Junior, it wasn't great preaching. Brother James, it wasn't oratorial skill. It was the power of God. But that morning, I preached and, and Josh Bush got up out of his seat, brought his broken life to an altar. And every September, September the 16th, I get a text. And here's the text. Thank you, man of God, for preaching the truth the morning I got saved. Amen. Now look up here, I won't help you. Three months ago, Brother Danny, I preached in his church. He got saved under my ministry. Now he is preaching in Wichita. I preached for him three or four months ago. We had 400 people. And you say, well, did they come to hear you? Well, I was the guest preacher, but it wasn't because I was there. That preacher that got saved under my ministry... 16, 18 years ago is now orchestrating and being a pastor of a great church in Wichita. And I thought about it. God made me pass by and cross his path and introduce him and connect him to the eternal God. Who am I preaching to tonight? We never know who we can connect to the eternal Father. And their lives be different. Your ministry I believe my, I think I can speak for you. I believe the reason you have that is you want to connect people to the eternal. Brother Danny, shouldn't that be all our ministry? And, and look, we, we, you say, preacher, but I, I, I don't do this or I don't do that. Look up here. You can connect them. You can witness to them. You can share your faith with them. Hey, listen, this little girl shared her story with Naaman's wife. I'm going to dig a little deeper. God is a God of detail. 
I see prisoner connection, parental connection. Write this down. I got to go. I see powerful connection. Verse 3, 2 Kings chapter 5, verse 3. She said to her mistress, Would God my Lord were with the prophet that is in Samaria, for he would recover him of his leprosy. One went in and told his Lord, and he got secondhand information, Randy. The little maid told the wife. The wife told somebody else. And somebody told Naaman. Now, I, I hate to be redundant. I, I get ill when people just keep on going over the same stuff. So I'm not trying to do that. So I'm going to say this. If I had been ripped away, Brother Joe, from my daddy and mama and my worship and the very food I love to eat, I might have said this. Let Naaman get what he deserves. Oh, don't act so holy up in here. Come on. We, let's go back over the rules. Jeremy, you going to the rules? Thank you. He said, yes, sir. I, I, heavy on the sir. Amen. Hey, listen, I know you know what I'm talking about. But Brother Danny, we might have said, let him get what he deserves. But not that little maid, Danny. She loved God so much. She wanted to connect him so that he could be whole and he could see his family and he could be with his wife and be with his kids and, and his life be forever changed. Ladies and gentlemen, can anybody see the painting? We got a world that is fallen. We got a world that is broken. And daddies cannot be daddies. Daddies cannot be good daddies. Mama cannot be good mamas. You hear me? Families cannot be healthy and whole until they meet Jesus. I want to connect them to eternal God. Now, I went a long way. She, Brother Danny, all she did, she, she shared her story. Now, I'm going to move. Uh, my, my final point's my shortest point. It's early. But, but she told her story. Dad, Mom, I want to help you. Grandpa, Grandma, I want to help you. You know what you need to do? I want to look in the eye when I say it. Share your story. You know what I've learned, Brother Danny? This probably won't go over good. This is my last night. <laughs> now, I ain't trying to be a jerk. Just trying to be real. Can I tell you what I've learned in life and in ministry? Ladies and gentlemen, if you're not telling your story... I got a reason why you're not telling it. You probably don't have one. If you really have a story, God, that went over good. <laughs> if you really have a story, you really need to share it. I was in I was in uh, I was in South Carolina last year, and and and, and y'all. Uh, Brother Junior, people, people think, you know, oh, and I, uh, evangelist is just so glamorous. You'll get over the glamour pretty quick. I, I'm in this hotel in, in South Carolina, Brother Sam, and, and they put me, hold up, you'll think it sounds good. They put me in the King Suite. Paul, King Suite. Sounds good. I can only sleep on this much of the bed. It's a king size bed, Brother Joe, but I can only sleep on this much of the bed. How come? If you roll one roll, you will roll three rolls before you stop. Because the bed is just like this. It ain't a bed, it's a ski slope. Leave me alone. Hey, I and I, I know, I know, Brother Randy, nobody ever feels sorry for this. But I'm in there, and here's the bad po point about it, Brother Jeremy. I, that was the second year I'd stayed there. The year before, it was the same way. But they had flipped the mattress, and the roll was a different. <laughs> I ain't make you, you, Brother Junior, you can't make it up. 
and I'm, 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 I'm sitting on this side much of the bed and I'm mad. I'm ticked off. I'm thinking this is stupid. I said somebody should have told them and I'm thinking I should have told them last time the bed. You know what I concluded? They don't give a rip. Anyhow, sitting on the edge of the bed, feeling sorry for myself. A man texted me. He said, did you watch your little girl today? I said, no, I'm in South Carolina holding a meeting. I didn't watch my little girl. He said, I'm going to send you a live feed. I'm going to show you a live feed of your little girl. Your little girl sung the heavens down this morning. I got, on the, I got online, Brother Davy. My little girl's singing. And they're shouting over here and they're shouting over there and people are raising their hands. And all of a sudden, I said, that's my little girl. And here's what I said, Brother Junior. Devil, you tried to destroy my family. But my little girl, my little boy, are serving God. Amen. Amen. Someone said, now look, Brother Sam, I'm not bragging, but I want to tell you one reason my family is still serving God. Because I shared my story. I told my kids about the love of God and the presence of God and the goodness of God. And even though, Brother Danny, I was gone a lot of their childhood, every chance I got, I shared my faith with my kids. Ladies and gentlemen, daddies and mamas, papas and mamas, you need to open your mouth and share your story with your kids. You say, well, Derek, I, you think I can, I can do it? Well, I've noticed if you like to shop, you have no trouble talking about shopping. If you're a sports fan, you have no trouble talking about your favorite sports team. This is going good. And I think you ought to be able to share your faith. Well, uh, I got to go and, and I, I'm, in my, I'm on my final point. I see the known sinner, the unknown saint. Lastly, I see the known Savior. Verse 8, they sent Naaman to meet Elisha. Elisha's name means God is salvation. Brother Danny, I I know this is kind of culturally shocking, especially in the church culture. If you want your lost loved ones saved and changed, it's not church they need. They need God. It is God that my family needs. It is God that your family needs. Elisha, verse 10, tells Naaman to go wash in the Jordan River seven times and thy flesh shall come again and thou shalt be clean. Naaman is upset. He thinks Elisha will come out and do some hocus pocus and he'll be healthy and whole. And that ain't what he did. Verse 13, the servant said, if he had bid thee to do some great thing, wouldst thou not have done it? Absolutely, you know he would have done it. Brother Danny, I thought about that today. Church, if you're here tonight and you're lost, you don't need to do some great thing. You need to do some simple thing. Bow your knee. Confess you're a sinner. And he's faithful and just to wipe the slate clean. How many would agree that's a a great deal? been a heathen, been stubborn, been hard-headed, been cantankerous, and then you come by your unworthy head and say you're guilty. And the same God that saved Joe and Tammy, the same God that saved Jeremy and Danny Jr. and Wally, and the same God that saved Derek can save you. Is anybody glad he's no respecter of person? Now, I told you, and I, I know my heart, and I know how... I, I can draw them out and I can be too long. So, And I know there's people here tonight that say, Derek, don't hurry. It's just 10 after 8. I've been to Louisiana enough. Ain't nothing going on tonight. I mean, I love y'all. There ain't nothing going on up in here. I've been around. Y'all roll up the sidewalks at 7.30. Amen. And I'm fine with
of that. I'm, I'm, I like that. I'm from a small town. I'm not making fun of Louisa, but I'm telling you this. This little girl is going to connect Naaman to the eternal God. And he goes and washes in the pool. He says this, Brother Randy. He said, isn't there waters in Samaria that are better than this stinking Jordan River? You know what I've learned about us? We are so prideful. He didn't tell you to wash in the waters of Samaria. He told you to wash in the Jordan River. And we're going to miss it because we're hard-headed. I met people. I've seen them on a weekly basis. Hold back a pews, look me in the eye and say, Derek, next year, I need you next year. Come back next. You know what I've learned? You don't have next year. You're not promised tomorrow. And you better get it right tonight. Now, I, I went a long way, and I'll say this. Brother Danny, in my closing statement, she shared her story. Here's what I pray tonight, that you would open your mouth and you would share your story. What links God would go to save sinners like me and sinners like you. I'll prove it to you. Brother Danny, in the 1800s, there was an extremely introvert, introverted man. He couldn't talk. He was very shy, very backwards. He taught Sunday school. He taught junior boys. He taught young men, Jeremy. He, he wouldn't make eye contact with them. He would keep his head down and share his faith and share his Sunday school lesson. He got a burden for a shoe salesman in the 1800s. Wally goes to the shoe salesman and never made eye contact. Bowed his head and shared his faith with D.L. Moody. And D.L. Moody got gloriously saved by a man, Brother Joe, that was an introvert. But that man shared his faith with D.L. Moody. Now, follow the... Sin Follow the picture. Follow what happens next. So D.L. Moody gets saved. D.L. Moody was preaching. And while D.L. Moody was preaching, Wilburn Chapman walked the aisle and got gloriously saved. Became a great evangelist. Wilburn Chapman was holding a meeting. And while he was preaching, Billy Sunday walked the aisle and got gloriously saved. I'm not done. Billy Sunday was preaching. Mordecai Ham walked the aisle and gave his heart to Jesus. Mordecai Mordecai Ham set up a tent in Charlotte, North Carolina. A dairy farmer, long, lanky fella, came in with his friends. Hey, he'd been sitting on one side. Now he sits on the left-hand side. And, and he came to heckle Mordecai Ham. Oh, listen to me. Billy Graham walked the aisle that night. Hold up, I'm not done. Randy, it all started with a man we don't even know his name, but he shared his faith with D.O. Moody. And then everybody, like a domino, great men, great preachers were born because somebody opened their mouth and shared the gospel. I was preaching in Texas. Now, I'm going to close my Bible, I, 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 and I don't mean anything, but it makes folks feel better. I don't know. I mean, I just, everybody could just feel it in my feeler. Everybody just. I feel better about it myself. And I, I really feel sorry for Danny booking that flight. And we got to leave out here at 3.30 in the morning. Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise God. Now I need everybody to look over here. Derek Daniel Stennett did not book that flight. And Brother Danny was going to shell out of it and get out of it. I said, oh no, no, no. Big boy, you'll get up because you booked a bad boy. If I ain't going to sleep, you ain't neither. Talk to me now. Hey, it's the truth. Now, I don't 
I'll try to get even. <laughs> but if I got to get up, praise God, hallelujah. Anyhow, Brother Ray, now I'm in Texas. I'm out there preaching, and there's a preacher there, and I, I, I'm not going to the long, drawn out story. But that preacher come, he wept, man, he cried. I, I knew the Lord spoke to him. I knew the Lord plowed his fields, and he'd been going through some stuff. I didn't know nothing about it. This hadn't been COVID. This was before. I don't know how many years ago now, Brother Joe, but I, 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 I had six or seven revivals canceled. And anyhow, this man from Texas, the guy that God had plowed his field a couple of weeks ago, months ago. Now, I, I, I'm not getting to preach because we've got a lot of snow on the ground and, and I'm, a, I'm unable to do my job. And this man from Texas, I, I didn't know him. I just met him one time. Well, like one time, I met him once. Paul, once. He calls me on the phone. He said, how are you doing? I need everybody to look up here. If you ever ask an evangelist how he's doing, this will always be his answer. I'm good. I'm good. You know why? We got too much pride to tell you whether we're good, bad, ugly, not good. Brother Joe, we're just going to say, I'm good. Well, the man said, well, I, I've been talking to God and I'm thinking, here's what I thought. <laughs> Jeremy, I hate to be this way, but I thought, I'm fitting to find out if he's been talking to God. I said, well, uh, that's good. And he said, uh, God told me you're broke. I said, that man's been talking to God. <laughs> <laughs> that man has been talking to God. Because I ain't even told my daddy. Wes, I didn't tell him. Nobody knew I was broke. But he said, God told me you're broke. I said, yeah, I am. And he said this. He said, I'm going to mail you. No, not mail you. Uh, go to Walmart. There's a money gram. He gave me this 9, 10, whatever code or whatever it was. I walk into <laughs> there. Wally, there was snow on the ground. I told my kids, I said, get in the car. I said, Dan, and we drive to Walmart. This is a true story if I ever told it. We get into Walmart. We walk in there, <laughs> Brother Danny, and, and, and I told my kids, I said, kids, stay in the car. Ain't no need all of us falling down. I'll be back. I walk in there. That little old lady, that little girl, she's a little girl. She said, how do you want your money? Poor people will take dimes, nickels, quarters. <laughs> hey, I'm just telling you. I said, oh, how are you going to give it to me? I knew it was more than dimes, nickels, and golders. When she pulled out Benjamin Franklin's, you said, but what's, oh, oh, let me help you. $100 bills. <laughs> now, I, I, I like ones, I like fives, I like tens, I like twenties, but my best friend is Ben. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm not big on Ben. Hey, anyhow. I, I got to tell this. Someone asked me the other day, somebody, I said, have you ever had a hallelujah handshake? They said, what's that? I said, that's when somebody hands you a $100 bill. They said, well, why would you say hallelujah? If they hand you $100, you'll say hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Anyhow, he said, I go there and the little girl, she says, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Now I know, I know. You folks in Virginia are sophisticated, educated, really spiritual, really, and you would have slowly, methodically reached down and picked up the money and act like you had good sense. When you're from Arkansas and you ain't got any money, before that last bill hit the counter, boom. <laughs> it's a truth if I ever told it. I told my kids, I said, Sam, I said this. I said, we're going to the Mexican joint today. <laughs> Brother Junior, you'll love this. And I said, we will get a large cheese dip today. <laughs> I ain't done, Brother Randy, Brother Joe. I said, and we don't even have to drink water today. You can have a sweet tea, Dr. Pepper, Coca-Cola Classic. <laughs> no, amen. We dipped chips and laughed and giggled. I got home, Jeremy. 
I sat my kids on the couch. I said, this morning we didn't have a dime. But God put it on the heart of a man from Texas to send us a thousand dollars. And I said today, I hope everybody in Washington County and West Fork, Arkansas hears us. But I said, Ashlyn, Aiden, we're going to raise our hands toward heaven and we're going to thank God and we're going to give God honor and we're going to give God credit and glory. My little girl raised her hand. My little boy raised his hand. And if you ask my kids today, do they remember the day a man from Texas sent us some money and we ate Mexican and we had fun and we paid our bills? Yes, you know why? Because we shared our story. If you want your kids to be something in the kingdom, Please don't let them learn it on the phone. Share your faith.